Hey everybody, Dan here. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my new Tudor. This is my Tudor Ranger. It is a uh, model number M79950-0001. It is a 39 millimeter watch, 20 millimeter lugs, 12 millimeters thick, 47.7 millimeters lug to lug with a sapphire crystal and 100 meters of water resistance and it houses the MT5402 movement with 70 hours power reserve. It's a COSC certified movement. In my timing, I'm gaining about one-tenth of a second per day, so the timing is incredible. And uh, the Tudor Ranger is famous for the North Greenland Expedition, which was done by the British, and this is a 70th year anniversary watch. So, this is a nifty watch, guys. I really like this one. Uh, it's going to be almost entirely satin finished, and you'll see a whole lot of satin everywhere you look. Uh, the tip of the crown there looks like maybe it's media blasted, but yeah, check out that dial. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a big dial because it's a 39 millimeter watch um, with a relatively small bezel but uh, it's ultra legible from any position. And it does that thing, oh, there's my cat. It does that thing where in certain, I don't know if I can get it here, but in certain lights, the only thing you're gonna see is those hands kind of glistening. And it's, I can't pick it up here, but it looks so cool in certain lights. And yeah, it's ultra legible from any position you're looking at this watch, you'll be able to tell what time it is. Uh, check out the satin on the side of this thing. And pictures do not do this watch justice because the finishing is so nice. You know, I originally picked this watch up hoping it would be like a go anywhere, do anything kind of watch. Now that I have it, I'm like, I don't want to scratch this thing up. It's too nice. Uh, the only place you're going to find a little bit of a polish is along the side of the bezel there. And it actually, it's such a small amount of polishing, but it really does kind of change the dynamic of the watch a little bit in certain lights. It just kind of classes it up a little. Uh, the, lo the links, satin on the top, satin on the sides, as well as the bottom. The clasp, also sides and top. The swing arms. You know, even on the sides of the swing arms, you can see a little bit of a grain finish on there. So a lot of just a nice attention to detail on this watch. And uh, I just, I love Tudor clasps. So the way they do these things, it's just awesome. It's so reassuring when you close it. Uh, it ain't going nowhere if you don't want it to. But when you open it, it's actually, they're not hard to open. So, very cool. It's got the, the T-fit, which is great. Um, you know, uh, before I held a T-fit, I was like, uh, I wonder if it's going to just move too easily or something where it'll pop out on its own. But no, there's actually like... It takes quite a bit of pressure to get that thing to move. So it's not going to go anywhere unless you want it to. But it also works really well. It's very smooth. Um, I keep it, you know, maybe about halfway out most of the time. And that fits real nice. So that's that's cool. Uh, the bottom of the case, the case back there, standard Tudor. Basically a copy of a Rolex, kind of but with a little added flare around the edge there uh, to show you that it is actually a Tudor manufacturer caliber. Um, but let me just, here, take a look at this thing. You know, I was trying to think about like, the loom is interesting. It's not yellow, it's not green. In real life, it's almost like the color of a banana. Like not the outside, but the inside of a banana. Um, and you know what, it's really grown on me. I wasn't sure if I would like it at first, because everybody on the internet's like, oh, that watch is hideous, you know? Oh, it's too bland, too plain. Oh, I don't like the green, I don't like the green hands and indices. They should have just made it stark white. <clears throat> I, it doesn't seem to me like they were trying to do a faux patina, like everybody says. It's almost like they were just trying to do something different. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the boldness, and I think it's going to withstand the test of time, even if a lot of people think it's hideous now. I think people are going to look at it one day and be like, yeah, that was a bold move, and I appreciate that Tudor did that. I think it's super cool. Um, you know, and then people also talk about, like, 
like why didn't they make the indices you know blocked like they do on uh, like the Pelagos or Pelagos? Um, well, that would bump this up to probably a four thousand dollar watch if they did that. So the fact that I picked this up for twenty four hundred, I'm I'm really stoked on that. That's that's a screaming price for what you get with this watch, especially with the timekeeping I'm getting at a tenth of a second a day gaining every day. That's insane. You know, I shouldn't have to adjust it for months at that rate. Uh, the hands are ultra legible as well. Um, let me bring it in a little closer here. So you can kind of get a look at those hands. Uh, pretty nicely done, you know. I'm not really seeing any imperfections anywhere. Um, at least not through my camera lens here. But maybe you'll spot something that I won't. But whatever. You can't see it with naked eye anyway. I don't care. One thing I noticed is kind of cool. Um, the female end link here, they actually, this is raised a little bit, so it really does kind of give it like a neat effect from certain angles. There's just kind of a lot happening here, you know, for an all brushed watch, um, there's actually a lot more happening here than you might think in the pictures, and that's why I'm telling people, you know, go check this one out in person, because it really is, it's a stunning piece. Let me unscrew the crown, Tudor crowns are awesome, I mean, you know, approaching Rolex territory. Uh, very smooth winding, you know, no play anywhere, and then threading it back up, you know, they thread up perfectly every time, no fuss, no nonsense, and then when you get to the end, it actually kind of locks into place, like you don't have to give it much of an extra push, but it locks into place, so you know it's not going to pop out, you know, that's, that's really cool. Um, is this a good field watch? <laughs> If I'm going to go out in the field and beat around in, like, some plants and, you know, go in a river stream or something, I think I'm going to take my Hamilton khaki just because I don't want to mess this one up. I'm sure it could take it no problem. I'm sure it would have no problem. It wouldn't have any problem going in a rocky stream. You know, it might get scratched up, dented up, dinged up, whatever. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's almost like a like a luxury watch that's dressed up to be a field watch, if that makes sense. Um, it's just, it's too nice to ding up, honestly. And, like, my Omega's seen some stuff, you know? I don't baby it. It's not like I go out and, like, try to scratch it, but, yeah, it's got a couple dings here and there, but I kind of want to keep this one flawless. I don't know why. I just think maybe they're not selling a whole lot of these, and they may discontinue it one day, and it could become, like, a collector piece or something. Possibly? I don't know. Anyway. But I am going to wear it, so um, it, it's going to be worn plenty, because it's too nice a watch not to wear. Uh, the links are held together with screws, and you can see those screws, you know, they basically are flush with the link. There's almost like a little bevel on the inside there or something. It's not like Rolex, where they, they put it together first, and then they grind it down and, you know, polish it out, so it looks real perfect. Not quite that perfect, but still very nice. They're all pretty evenly, you know, even in depth and everything. So, yeah. Anyways, I really like this one. I think I'm going to hang on to it. Uh, you can see... Here, check this out. Not quite Rolex tolerances with those end links. A little bit of play in there. But from the naked eye, when you're looking at it, you, you can't really see any daylight or anything. It's just not 100% tight. Um, oh, all right, guys. Give me one second here. I'm going to shut the light off. And get you some loom. Okay, we got green loom. And in a world where literally every single company is moving to blue loom, we still got green with Tudor. And it's another thing I want to commend them for. Because in real life, this almost looks like, almost like tritium or something. It's not as green as it shows on camera. It's... It's a little less so, and that's uh, that's really nice. I like that. I always thought the tritium loom color was really cool. Um, but yeah, everybody's doing blue, and I do like the look of green loom, so I I'm happy with this. I think this is great. And from any angle, anywhere you look, that's a legible watch. And I think that was kind of the whole point. You know, a field watch needs to be ultra legible, no matter where you are, you know, I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm probably never going to go out in the field with this thing. But at nighttime, it glows all night, and that's kind of all that matters. 
Uh, let me put it on the wrist real quick. <clears throat> okay, seven and a half inch wrist. Uh, let me zoom out just a little here. There we go. All right, check it out. <clears throat> this watch fits perfectly. It's very comfortable. I took out two links and I keep it kind of right in the center of the T-Fit and it's just awesome. It's so comfortable. Uh, not like my Black Bay 58, which didn't have T-Fit, but I just couldn't find a good fit with that watch. With this one, it's a perfect fit and I can wear it all day. No problems, no weird pulling hair, pinching, you know, no sharp ends or anything that bother the wrist. Um, it's adjustable, which is awesome. But uh, yeah, just a great watch, guys. Okay, well, uh, I think I'll wrap this one up. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. I'll be doing some more reviews here. But uh, in the meantime, everybody have a wonderful day. Bye now.